You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Senior. Today's show is powered to you by our friends at Magic Spoon. You can get $5 off on the tastiest and healthiest cereal out there by simply plugging in that link at the bottom of your screen. It's magicspoon.com slash 49ers Report. They even have specialty flavors like maple waffle. It's bomb. Try it out. Get a boxer for magicspoon.com slash 49ers Report. Here's what we have cooking up on today's show. We're going to take a look at some 49ers trade targets with the NFL trade deadline coming up on November 2nd. There's no doubt that the Niners have some holes on this roster because of some misses in free agency, the NFL draft, as well as some injuries across the board, namely Jason Verrett at defensive back, and that's why the Niners are thin in the defensive backfield. Here are the 49ers needs needs at two and three in no particular order but we do start off with the secondary that injury to Jason Verrett in the first game of the regular season came at such an inopportune time and it really zapped the Niners depth in the secondary running back as a position of need because of that injury to Raheem Mostert Jeff Wilson also out Elijah Mitchell was missing for a little while offensive line because Aaron Banks drafted in the second round has not lived up to those lofty expectations Dre Greenlaw recently went under surgery to repair an injured groin. So the Niners a little bit thin at the linebacker spot as well. And the reason we're taking a look at some of these trade targets, anytime you can bring in talent to load up your roster, you got to be able to do it. So let's get into these 49ers trade targets. And we start off by looking at a very popular name among league circles. That is Colts running back Marlon Mack. A couple weeks ago, we had discussed this on the channel, that Indianapolis and the representatives for Marlon Mack came to an agreement that they would allow Mack to seek a trade. A big reason for that, he's currently behind second-year stud running back Jonathan Taylor, who had an illustrious career at Wisconsin, is off to a great start in his NFL career, as well as Naheem Hines, who is a dual-threat back who the Colts recently signed to a contract extension. Now, Marlon Mack missed much of last year because of a torn Achilles. He is now healthy coming off of that injury, and it's my belief that I think Marlon Mack, if you plugged him into Kyle Shanahan's outside zone scheme, which predicates itself on the run game, which I think is a big reason why this Niners offense has struggled because they've been bad in the ground game. He'd be a good fit for Kyle Shanahan's offense. You take a look at what Marlon Mack did two years ago in 2019. He was really, really good. And this is a guy who brings a lot to the table. He can run in between the tackles. He can get out to the perimeter. He can also catch the ball out of the backfield. And in 2019, you saw that. On display, 247 carries, more than 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns, average yards per rush of four and a half. And the 49ers running back depth chart right now is somewhat thin. You're without Raheem Mostert for the rest of the year. He just underwent surgery on that torn knee cartilage. Jeff Wilson, according to Kyle Shanahan, as he spoke to the press yesterday, not going to join the team until about November. The hope initially was that he'd be back in October. That's not going to happen. Jamichael Hasty might return after the bye week against the Indianapolis Colts on Sunday Night Football, but this is what you're rocking with right now. Elijah Mitchell, Trey Sermon, and Trenton Cannon. So for the 49er faithful, let me ask you this. Would you make a move for Marlon Mack? I don't think it would cost all that much. Maybe a mid-round pick? Highest, maybe a third round pick, type T for trade, type P for pass. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get hit with that YouTube ad break, scroll on down and get your votes in. Another trade target at another position of need, Kyle Fuller. So Kyle Fuller was traded from the Chicago Bears because they didn't have any money left to the Denver Broncos and expectations were high for him. He's been bad this year, and he got roasted in coverage last week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Gave up more than 100 yards through the air. And according to ESPN, the Broncos have been receiving calls on Kyle Fuller dating back to the NFL preseason. This year, somewhat affordable, but kind of a high price tag, base salary of $9 million. He is going to be an unrestricted free agent after this season. So if he doesn't play well, you let him hit the open market and you probably lose some draft capital if that's what you give up. He would definitely be an upgrade, in my opinion, though, over Josh Norman, who is getting picked apart in coverage against the Arizona Cardinals, one-on-one -on -one against DeAndre Hopkins. I'll take D-Hop as well as Drake Kirkpatrick, who once was good, but might be washed now because he's older and longer in the tooth. As for what Kyle Fuller has done this year, 
When quarterbacks target him, he's giving up a completion percentage of 64, which is a little bit below league average, but the yards, not great at 307. Yards per completion, north of 16. He's also given up two touchdowns in coverage, but as I mentioned, he was getting roasted at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh for the Denver Broncos last weekend. 49ers defensive back depth chart right now. It's been up and down because they've dealt with so many injuries. They just released Devonte Harris, by the way. That's news that came in right before our live show as we record this during our live show on Tuesday. We go live every single Tuesday at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. Emmanuel Mosley, Dante Johnson, who came up with the big strip. Jaquaski Tart, Jimmy Ward, Kwan Williams. In addition to that, you have guys like Diamador Lenore, Ambry Thomas, Josh Norman, Drake Kirkpatrick, Tavon Wilson, Talanoa Hufonga. But I think Kyle Fuller would be a good addition to the defensive backfield. So given everything that I've said, and if you've watched him, your scouting opinion of Kyle Fuller, grade him right now for the player that he currently is. Former first round pick, former pro bowler with the Chicago Bears. Not that player anymore, but maybe he could be solid in a better scheme with the Miko Ryans, a defense that is improving. A, B, C, D, or F. Be sure to get those grades in in the comment section down below. As I mentioned off the top, Today's show is presented to you by our friends at Magic Spoon. I'm not kidding you when I tell you this. This is cereal that is delicious, healthy, protein-packed, and loaded with quality ingredients. For instance, you take some of those traditional brands out there. They are loaded with carbs, loaded with sugar. Magic Spoon, they take the opposite approach, and it's really not even close. In my hands right now, I have the maple waffle flavor. You compare Magic Spoon's maple waffle flavor to the traditional brands out there. Magic Spoon, 13 grams of protein, 4 grams of net carbs, 0 grams of sugar. It's grain-free and gluten-free. The other brands, 3 grams of protein, 31 grams of net carbs, 13 grams of sugar. It really is a no-brainer, and all of the flavors from Magic Spoon are guaranteed to rock your taste buds. This Niners defense has been eaten up the last couple of weeks. Maybe they're fueled by the protein in some Magic Spoon cereal, and you can get $5 off your checkout by going to magicspoon.com slash 49ers report. I'll be sure to put that link in the description as well as the comment section of this video. More 49ers trade targets to get to, and this might come as a surprise to some people out there because it's at a position that the Niners are somewhat deep at. But I'm just a little bit concerned about this George Kittle calf injury, and it's the Niners' belief that he's going to be back around week nine against the Arizona Cardinals. But if Zach Ertz can be had for a very affordable price, I still think he can really play as he's only in his early 30s. And for a long time, he was one of the best tight ends in the National Football League, producing at a very, very high rate. Now, he's been rumored to be in trade discussions all throughout the offseason, all throughout the preseason. According to some reports, Ertz thought that he was going to be on the move from the team that drafted him several years ago twice. But would Ertz be an upgrade over Ross Dwelly and Charlie Warner? That's why I'm throwing him in to this conversation. I think an Ertz trade would depend solely on George Kittle's health. Now, prior to last year, George Kittle has been a pretty durable tight end. I have some questions about his long-term durability because George Kittle is a player who plays so extremely hard, which is what makes him great. But if he's going to be out for an extended period of time and that calf injury doesn't get better, I've always been a fan of Kyle Shanahan utilizing more 12 personnel and simply targeting his tight ends more. I think Zach Ertz could flourish in this offense if Kyle Shanahan does throw the football to tight ends. This year, he's been much better than he was Last year, speaking of Zach Ertz, 14 receptions, 160 yards, average yards per catch north of 11. He's brought in one touchdown. He's somewhat expendable because I think the Eagles want to go with the youngster in Dallas Goddard, who's probably fresher, more dynamic at this point of his career than the older Zach Ertz. But Ertz, no doubt, probably the best tight end in the history of Philadelphia's franchise. So pick one if you had to pick one to be George Kittle's backup. Ross Dwelly, Charlie Warner, Zach Ertz. Type RD for Dwelly, CW for Warner, ZE for Zach Ertz. Drop those names in the comment section right now. Make sure you subscribe to the 49ers Report because we are growing like crazy. And it's all thanks to you guys for supporting everything that we do. We are the largest 49ers News and Rumors channel on YouTube right now. North of 42,000 subscribers. Shout out to Ronnie Lott. Hopefully we can get to 43,000 over the next couple of days. We give you free daily videos, live shows every Tuesday, the latest 49ers news, 49ers rumors, breaking news, 
Q&As within our live shows, watch parties as well, which have been a massive success. We never did them before this year, but they've been popping off. Hit that red subscribe button down below if you want informative and educational, entertaining 49ers coverage. Let's pivot to the offensive line now. This is certainly a position group of need because Mike McGlinchey hasn't been good. Daniel Brunskill's been awful. Aaron Banks hasn't developed as a second-round pick in this past NFL draft. So could the Niners maybe target a massive name in Lyle Collins of the Dallas Cowboys? He's been out the last four weeks. Jerry Jones saying on Dallas local radio today, as we record this during our live show on Tuesday, that he's not going to play for a fifth consecutive game. He's been out because he violated the NFL's substance abuse policy. He missed some of these drug tests. And Terrence Steele, in his absence, has played very, very well in exchange for for Lyle Collins, which could make Lyle somewhat expendable. And Mike McGlinchey hasn't played well this year, has not lived up to those lofty expectations of being a top 10 pick out of Notre Dame a couple years ago. He had by far his worst game of the season against the Arizona Cardinals, where J.J. Watt was just having himself a day all throughout the afternoon. Pro football focus grade of less than 50. He gave up four pressures, two quarterback hits, and one sack. Not ideal when you consider that Trey Lance was making his first career NFL start. And... The strong side was getting blown up all throughout the afternoon. Going into the season, I liked the 49ers offensive line. Didn't love the depth, but I certainly liked the starters. Trent Williams has been pancaking cats throughout the first several games of the season. Lakin Tomlinson is certainly a serviceable guard. Alex Mack has been somewhat questionable in the run and pass game as a combination, but overall he's been pretty solid. Daniel Brunskill has not been good at all because I thought Aaron Banks was going to replace him, and Mike McGlinchey so up and down. And I know that the Niners kind of exercised his fifth-year option, so he'll be back next year probably, but I'm just not sure if he's going to be the future right tackle. You know who would be? Lyle Collins. Lastly, let's take a gander at some linebacker trade targets. Dre Greenlaw still out after undergoing groin surgery, and all of these guys can be had at a pretty decent price. Probably anybody on the Houston Texans roster can be had. Christian Kirksey, pretty solid linebacker, formerly of the Cleveland Browns. Mac Wilson does play for the Cleveland Browns right now because there's a little bit of a uh, jumble up there with some of the top-end premier talent on that roster. He's not getting a ton of playing time. Uh, Nick Kwiatowski of the Las Vegas Raiders is a pretty solid player as well, but more of a two-down linebacker, so I'm not not sure he'd be a full three down linebacker in D'Amico Ryan's defense. And then Jordan Hicks is really a popular name because he requested a trade during the offseason, but right now he's on pace for around 1,000 snaps throughout the regular season. The Cardinals defense has exceeded expectations. They've been very, very good, very explosive, and very dynamic. And Jordan Hicks has been a key component of that defensive success. So while he already has requested a trade, I'm not sure the Arizona Cardinals are going to deal him now considering they're the last undefeated team in the league and coming off a win against our Niners. So which player do you want the 49ers to trade for? I gave you a list of several guys. You can drop some names in the comment section down below right now. Let me know which player you want the 49ers to trade for. It can be realistic. It can be hyperbolic. Have some fun with it and drop those names down in the comment section.